Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. So given that it is officially December and officially the Yuletide season, even if the radio stations around here have been playing Christmas music since like two weeks, since like a week and a half after Halloween, why do they do that? <laughs> It is now really the Yuletide season. I'm good with anything after Thanksgiving. At least let us get through one holiday before we start preparing for the next. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, in honor of the Yuletide season, I have decided to share with you another book recommendation list. And I did actually do a kind of cozy winter read list last year. And there is some overlap. I'm pretty sure at least one of these is an overlap but I couldn't resist including it. And it's just going to be a really fun, sweet little video to give you some suggestions on what to read to really enjoy this wintry season. Because we are inside so much more often now, why not spend that time with a book? So let's get into the list. These are not ranked, by the way, it's just books that I'm recommending. And it's a top five. So right off the bat it is the snow queen and other winter tales this is my gorgeous copy it is the barnes and noble leather bound classics edition i love these editions of books and look at that that is just like a winter storm of gorgeousness <laughs> on that end paper so this is a collection obviously it has the hans christian anderson tale the snow queen in it I believe it's probably the last tale in the book or is it the first it's the first or the last i haven't looked at this since last winter oh it's the first okay it's the first story and then the last story is the nutcracker so the alexander dumas version of the nutcracker so those are both highly recommended if you love a good wintry tale but there's a bunch in here every kind of winter set fairy tale is collected in here that is why it's so thick what is great about this is you don't have to read the whole book. Pick and choose. Choose your favorites, read them, and enjoy a little Yuletide wintry coziness. And in the same vein, I'm almost 100% sure I didn't recommend this last year. I think this book was actually still at my parents' house. I picked up some books uh, that I had stored there. so. This is White as Snow. It's by Tanith Lee, and she is a fantasy writer. And this is part of the fairy tale series created by Terry w Winsling, and it was published by Tor. Tor is a great fantasy publisher if you are not a fantasy reader. And I really enjoyed this, but I will add in, this is obviously a Snow White retelling, it is not a child center. Like this is not written for children. This is very much an adult book. There is adult content throughout this. I appreciate that. I love a good darker, deeper fairy tale retelling, but I wouldn't even classify this one as YA. This is very much written for grown adults. I really love that. You don't actually find a lot of fairy tale retellings that aren't in the YA genre. YA, you find a ton of them. And I do enjoy those. I do enjoy YA fairy tale retellings a lot. I'm into anything fantasy and supernatural, as I'm sure people who are fans of this channel have gleaned. My viewers would know this, but I have a hard time finding fairy tale retellings that aren't written with YA in mind, or at least centered in what ended up being published in YA because they had that YA read to them. This fairy tale series though, the Terry Winsling fairy tale series published by Tor, they are written for adults. And this one is super interesting because it is a layered, very fleshed out. It's a full length book. Um, what is it? It's 319 pages. Yeah, 319 pages long. So you have an entire tale told here. 
Uh, it does have romance and it does have, if I, it's been a couple years since I read it, I think it has some naughty bits in there as well. Uh, and unexpected. The love story is a bit switched up, which I appreciated greatly the way they switched things up. It's not going to be for everyone. Be aware if you do not like a little bit of smut mixed in with your books, if you do not like things written with an adult audience in mind, if you prefer fairy tales to be very childlike and innocent, this is not that. This is more of a callback to fairy tales how they originally were. Fairy tales were not originally for children, mind. Fairy tales were written for adults and passed for adults. And that's why we have so many dark, messed up old fairy tales that were then eventually sanitized. Even the Grimm's brothers sanitized fairy tales from their original tellings. For instance, Snow White, they famously, they published in the 1812 edition, the first edition, with the story being that it was her mother, not her stepmother, but they thought that was too dark. So they sanitized it in subsequent printings and they sanitized other tales. So yeah, if you want to dig deep into the darker side of fairy tales, I highly recommend, but uh, there's a lot of horrors to be found there. And I think that's why I could be such a huge fairy tale fan and horror buff. Um, and if you want just a really fun retelling that is not sanitized, this is a great option. And obviously Snow White is a tale that I always feel is very wintry. And I mean, she's named Snow White, obviously that has a winter connotation to it. My third recommendation is the selected poems of Christina Rossetti. Now, I am a big fan of Christina Rossetti's poetry, and I'm a big fan of her brother, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, as an artist. He was a member of the pre raphaelite Brotherhood, and she was a Victorian poet. He was a poet, too, and he wrote some really beautiful poetry. Um, but the reason I'm choosing Christina as someone to read in the winter is because of her poem titled A Christmas Carol. And yes, this was Victorian, probably was inspired by not only Christmas carols, but by Dickens, because I believe they were contemporaries. Anyway, uh, this is the actual poem was turned into the song in the, the Victorian Christmas Carol in the bleak midwinter. And it even starts in the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. This is that poem. So she is to me intrinsically linked with the Christmas and Yuletide season. Although she has several amazing poems. Uh, my favorite of hers, which will probably surprise no one is Goblin Market. It's one of her longer poems. I actually think I probably will do a gothic read through of this particular poem one day on the channel here. I just, I adore her poetry. This is just a little teeny hardbound selection of her poems. I do not think this is anywhere near all of them. You can also just read these online. You could find some of her works through Poetry Foundation and some other poetry websites. So yeah, just look her up and I'm sure you could find them free to read on the internet as well. And then my last two recommendations are both Arthurian because I am the Enchantress of Avalon. Of course, I have to give you some Arthurian recommendations in this list here. I don't know if I recommended this last year and I really should have because this is something you should be reading at the old tide season. And that is Sir Gawain or Sir Gawain. <laughs> it's pronounced either way. And I go back and forth over which pronunciation I actually prefer, but it is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And this particular one that I have, it's just the one I have that's a singular copy, just the Green Knight. I have it, I believe in some collections also, but I show this one when I do videos and talk about the story because it is just the Green Knight by itself in a book. And this one is a verse translation by Marie 
Boroff, and mine is a vintage copy from, oh goodness, 1967. <laughs> I got this used, obviously. Um, and this is the most wintry Yuletide story in the Arthurian canon. It is literally the story of Sir Gawain and his battle with the Green Knights. It begins with the Green Knight coming to Camelot at a, the, at a Yuletide feast. I believe it's actually, again, it's been a year since I read it, obviously. <laughs> I try to read it around Yule every year. Uh, I believe it's actually technically like New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. But Yule is celebrated across a couple of weeks traditionally. And really same thing with Christmas. So he's at the feast at Camelot, which is Arthur's court, and he is Arthur's nephew. And this huge green knight, all made of greenery, very much inspired by the green man, comes into the court of Camelot and proposes playing a game, the beheading game. And he was, we learned that he was sent there in a plot to scare, scare Guinevere to death. We learned that at the end, but he's asking for challengers. Try and behead me. And if you can, I will return the blow in a year's time. And no one really wants to take him up on this. Certainly Arthur doesn't. But Gawain being brave and this knight who has all these ideals and he wants to be this perfect knight is like, okay, I'll do it. And he's also a little bit foolhardy. He's young. And he goes and he swiftly takes the Green Knight to axe, beheads him with one blow, and that's it. He thinks he's dead. But then the Green Knight picks up his head, says one year hence, and leaves. So then the next, uh, a year passes. And the next year, Gowan has to go on a little adventure, a nightly quest to figure out uh, to go to the green chapel, meet the green knight and get the blow returned to him. And it is really a telling of the knightly virtues and Morgan Le Fay, my beloved Morgan Le Fay is a key figure, even though she isn't necessarily a main character in the text, she was the one who set it into motion. It was her that created the Green Knight through glamour magic. And it was her who sent him to Camelot because of course she wanted to scare Guinevere to death. But then she found the opportunity to test Gawain, to test her nephew, because obviously she's Arthur's sister, her nephew to see if he was worthy of being a true knight of Camelot. And possibly a future king because Arthur didn't have a heir of his own. Finally, my final recommendation, and I do plan to read this this winter time, whether I'll get through it all before Yule, I do not know, but that is The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. It's one of my all-time favorite novels, one of my all-time favorite books, period. Now, I always hesitate when talking about this book, even though I have so much love for it, because the author was... A horrible human being and she did really disgusting and monstrous things. I will not get into them on this channel. I've mentioned the fact that she has done this in other videos and I allow my viewers to look up what she did on their own but I I hate who she was as a person. I am not even a fan of her other works. The only reason I gravitated towards this book and read this book is because it is the Arthurian legends retold from a female perspective, from Morgan's perspective it's in particular. And I have recently over the last year begun to find a lot of solace in viewing this book as not just the art of Marion Zimmer Bradley and, and separating the art from the artist, but thinking of her as a conduit. She was a conduit who was able to jot down the story and was divinely inspired to do so, rather than it just being from her imagination. 
And I think there's a lot of understanding. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot to that assertion because I've read other works by her, even others in the same series. She did other books that predated, that were prequels to this. None of them read like this. It's a very specific book and has a very specific feeling. And it reads like this epic, magical tale of a fairy woman and her divine origins and everything. It is so beautifully written. I highly recommend it. As long as you can separate the artist from her art. The art is amazing. The artist was a horrible human being. So... I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like, comment, subscribe, and check out my blog, whiteroadsofavalon.life, for even more content. I will link some blog posts in the description box below, as always. And I hope you have a very magical wintry week, everyone. Bye now.